welcome back and this is the chip master right in this video series uh, we're going to look at the ram action timing and a little piece of this architecture i'm going to explain right and then we delve into the ram timing what are some of the key signal that is needed in order for the ram to pass when it comes to no display fault and how to accurately judge a fault when it comes to the ram section right and especially for a no display all right, so first I'm just going to explain this architecture. As you can see, this is a Dell Inspiron and it's an N5420 and uh, it's a Quanta architecture, R08. And this is the block diagram, right? And uh, this is a, a pretty old board in terms of a DDR3. I'm explaining for the DDR3 RAM architecture also. And as you can see, this is a PCH and CPU, which is a sec third and second, right? So this is a, a P, uh, socketed PGA, right? Pin grid array. Right, so this is a pin grid array, so it's inside of a socket, meaning the CPU can be removed and they are interchangeable, interchangeable so you can uh, interchange for a second gen with a third gen or from a second gen to a third gen, they both can work. Right, and as you can see, it also supports the 13th generation of NVIDIA graphic card, which is a dedicated graphics card or independent graphic card. Right, and this is NVIDIA and it also supports the DDR3 1 gigabyte and DDR3 2 gigabyte, which can transfer up to 128 megabits of data within a 16 bit, bit by bit row, right? So, as you can see, here we have RAM over here, and this is a DDR3 RAM, and it is uh, can transfer up to 1600, right? This is a DDR3 bus speed of 1600 transfer data, all right, per second, and uh, this is a very good machine, right? And uh, we have here our FDI bus, we have the DMI bus, so the CPU will always communicate to the PCH through the DMI bus and that stands for direct media interface right as you can see and the speed right and the speed and this is the FDI flexible display interface all video display information is passed through this line and all data information is passed through this line so if there is any form of communication this is a one-way communication please bear that in mind right from the CPU to the PCH when it transfer and display this is one way this is a one-way communication this is a two-way communication right please bear that in mind and this is the DMI bus which is the main bus which is used for communication a lock up if this bus is abnormal or the compensation resistors is not uh, is abnormal or change its value then you will get no display fault right if this if this section is broken then you can get no display also because all video display information is passed through here right <coughs> So if this line is broken, you can get no display. Sometimes you can get caps lock and numlock. If you plug a keyboard in the USB port and you get caps lock and numlock, that means that machine has passed its post and it is initialized, but you won't get any display because there is no display information that can be passed in order for PCH to output to the HDMI, the CRT, and the regular LVDS connector. So these sections will be cut off because there's no video information is passed from the integrated graphics card in the CPU or from the dedicated GPU. That information will be blocked, right? If this line is blocked and then you get no internal or external display if you connect a HDMI or a regular VGA connection, right? On the this side here, we have the SATA, which is HDD, which is the hard drive, and it is uh, the SATA bus, which can transfer up to 600 megabytes of data per second. We have the optical disk drive and that's a 300 megabytes. So this is um, the optical disk drive, slower speed. So it's a less speed transfer rate. We also have USB 3.0 ports and we also have USB 3.0 bus. And this is an Intel Series 7 PCH with the code name of Panther Point given to it by Intel. And this supports USB 3.0 and USB 2.0 here as you can see, right? So this is a very powerful machine in Intel Series 6. This only supports USB 2.0. In order for it to transfer USB 3.0, then there is a dedicated chip between this bus. So the PCH will send regular USB 2.0 and then the chip will basically convert. Alright, so yes, yeah, so so this chip has to be converting that information to USB 3.0. So I found a schematic here for USB that supports an Intel series Cooper Point, which is a sixth generation of PCH, right? Intel Series 6. As you can see, we have a PCI Express 1 for USB 3.0, right? So this chip is used to convert USB 2.0 to USB 3.0 and use a PCI Express 1 uh, lane. And uh, as you can see, we have USB, regular USB 2.0. So this PCH doesn't support USB 3.0, right? 
all right so usb which is controlling the fingerprint the camera the bluetooth right the infrared emitter right all these things are controlled to usb 2.0 but if you want usb 3.0 function you have to go to a conversion chip and that is using that chip so let's go to that schematic and uh that, let's go to that page right i was going to type in tusb right seven three two zero right Oh, so this word doesn't have a dedicated chip so it's there but it's not like so it says page 30 let's go to page 30 if the page is correct all right and um, this is the chip all right right good but it's not installed all right so this is a chip that is used to transfer usb 3.0 information see usb 3 are right xdp positive and negative which is the data line right and uh, this is the usb x and negative is also a data line transfer and it is going to give us usb 3.0 and it has a clock and all that supply need supply right it needs a reset plt reset right and it needs its clock see two clock usb clock 48 megahertz so once usb supply comes it gets 48 megahertz clock right and it gets the reset then it will start to work Right, and it will output USB 3.0 USB 3.0 information. Right, the clock 48 megahertz megabytes for the USB 24. So this chip is used to transfer USB 2.0. Right, see USB 2.0 information is passed, and if you want USB 3.0, this is a USB connector. Right, it's not installed, so it is. This board doesn't install the components to use for USB 3.0. So both USB 2.0 and USB 3.0 can be transferred only when this chip is installed. Then it will get the reset the clock and the 40 megahertz and the supply before it will start to work. All right. All right. So that is USB 3.0, and for Intel Series 6, which only supports USB 2.0, but in Intel Series 7, there's no need for a conversion chip. It up with direct three USB 3.0 information to the designated ports and uh, buses for it to use. Right, you also have your uh, three axis fast sensor. I think this is a, a gravity sensor that is normal found on the Mac instead of the touchpad era. And uh, we have the EC, right? The EC communicates to the PCS through the LPC buses. So LPC stands for low pin count, and this is a EC which is a ITE brand manufacturer and it is 8581e and it is managing the keyboard and it manages the touchpad it is also managing the fan and the thermal information is passed through an sm bus to get the information from this chip from the cpu from the pch through the term chip signal to control the fan pulse modulation right and the fan rotation speed detection we also have the ram chip for it which is an 8 megabyte ram so automatically this chip is the main BIOS because EC doesn't normally need a 8 megabyte BIOS for its main BIOS is normally 128k up to a megabyte and that information is stored in that, inf that BIOS here so this is the main BIOS so the PCH has another BIOS here but this BIOS indicates that it's not there but it has the option of having its own BIOS because it can read the BIOS through the SPI bus right but it goes through the SPI bus it has an SPI bus here to communicate in order to read the bios right so instead of going through the lpc bus then the lpc bus the ec through the spi bus it basically uses its own spi bus to communicate just to read the bios only but this is the main communication line and this is a two-way communication the lpc bus right so a lack of this communication will cause no display the cpu can't run code so this doesn't see doesn't stop the cpu from running code the only way the CPU will stop running code unless the DMI bus is broken. If the DMI bus is broken, then the CPU cannot run code because this is the main communication line between it and you get no display. But you, if this line is broken, the CPU can run code, right? But you still get no display because you need to access certain things like the keyboard, the touchpad, all this information must be passed, right? But it can be con coming through this part to read the BIOS. So if the EC has a fault, it can still work, but you have various problems, right? Random shutdown, blue screen restarts, it starts inside of the system, when you go inside the system, it just suddenly restarts. So this is a beautiful design by bypassing the LPC bus to read the BIOS. It can just use its own dedicated SPI bus to read the BIOS, okay? I'm just gonna show you a video of a, uh, on my phone that I recorded, of how we can know if the CPU is running code. Okay, so here it is. I'm on the plate now. Alright, so this is what it is all about. I have here 
And as you can see, we have a code reading of 6.9. And so if I remove the charger and uh, plug in the adapter, all right, you can see it. All right, I don't know why it's not playing. Let me try again. All right, this is a board that I've been running on the And as you can see, we have a code reading of 6.9. And so if I remove the charger and uh, plug in the adapter, you see that the CPU on board, if it is zero, that means CPU is not running code. So the CPU gets the reset signal initialized and it checks it. And the RAM is initialized. And that's uh, giving me a code of 69. Okay, so. Alright, so that is uh, a video that you're showing how to know if the CPU is running code or not. Right, so if the CPU is not running code, then you get 00FF. Right, and there's a notice before, so you need to check CPU working conditions. Right, supply reset and clock. Right, main clock, bus clock. Right, and um, all working conditions of the CPU. All small voltage is going to the CPU, and also if the CPU is a socketed CPU, you can plug a dummy card inside of the sock and measure the resistance of the DMI bus between the PCH and the CPU. If there's any abnormal fault and um, abnormalities, then that's your fault. Right, many times that fault will come when the PCI bus becomes abnormal or we are broken line inside of the circuit and that becomes more difficult to repair because of all this inside of the, the trial layer anyway we're going to continue we have a 25 megahertz crystal here we have a 32.768 kilohertz which is uh for the rtc section this is the main reference clock there's an internal clock module inside of the pch and once this reference clock has 25 megahertz start oscillating then the pch will start to issue each clock to each device it's only if the clock the clock request is sent by device which is normally a low level it is release 100 megahertz so the cpu want over 100 megahertz the graphics card will need 100 megahertz right the LAN will need another 100 megahertz and so forth so each device must send a clock request signal in order for it to release the 100 megahertz we also have the high definition audio bus here which is the audio codec and this is the drivers which is the audio bus right and it is managing a speaker right sorry managing two jacks and a digital microphone for the jack and the speaker which is a combo jack which is an internal uh, which can operate as a microphone and a headset microphone or hair microphone in one jack right this is a combo jack and this is the audio codec this is the audio ic we also have a pcie which is a one by lane small bus speed one width and it is connected to the lan here and the lan is connected to the rg45 connector right we have usb 2.0 here which is the next part of the USB we have USB 3.0 we also have USB 2.0 and USB which is uh, connected to USB 4 or 5 which is the output of the USB uh, bus right we have one for the wireless LAN and Bluetooth we have for the MSATA right and we have P2 PCI Express and uh, one for the MSATA one for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth we also have a USB 3.0 another usb 3.0 port here which is one and the usb also is connected to the card reader the fingerprint and the camera so all these information all these devices are connected to the usb 2.0 while the lan is connected to the pci express right up here we have the display output part which is from the pch and uh, i see igfx which is the graphics output all right as you can see let me just clear Alright, so this is all putting all display information to the LCD connector, the CRT connection and the HDMI. Right, so when the, the integrated graphics card, there's an internal graphics card that's inside of the CPU. When you're doing basic computing and stuff, all that information is passed by default through the FDI bus and is all put into the different section, right, to the CRT, the HDMI and the LVDS connector. When you're playing a game or watching a movie, this this integrated graphic module inside of the CPU cannot withstand that amount of 
processing of graphic video processing so it will switch over to the dedicated graphic card right this is known as smart switching right or intelligent switching so it will switch over to the graphics card and the graphics card will send that information the video information to enhance the amount of graphics that the integrated graphics cannot withstand and then that information is passed through the fdi bus and then output to the hdmi or the crt or the lvds right so this is the nvidia which is a 13 gen n13p which is a 13 gen nvidia graphic card and this is how it works it's smart switching so the graphics card is not turned on at all times so what it does it switches over switches over so it switch 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 so when you're playing a game it switches over to the nvidia if you're doing basic computing then use a dedicated integrated graphics card right so this is known as smart switching and that information is passed through the pci express right this is a very important and crucial part to to troubleshoot because if the pci address uh, uh, bus is not working or the, there are some small capacitors that are connected to the pci express bus from the cpu right from the cpu to the to the graphic card right? there are some small capacitors if any of these capacitors have a fault then it will cause the nvidia graphics card cannot communicate the cpu and you will get hanging freezing sometimes display sometimes doesn't display if you're playing a game or stuff you will have faults communicating with the graphic card because it can use the dedicated integrated you can get display when we need to switch over to communicate with the nvidia graphic card then you get freezing hanging right uh if you install a graphics card when you reach the display information the screen just blanks it goes dark you can't get any picture you'll have to uninstall this driver in order to just use this one and it can't work because it's going to they, they, they are it's already configured in the BIOS to always do a smart switching, intelligent switching from this NVIDIA. So these capacitors are very important and crucial, which passes, these are called coupling capacitors, right? And this capacitance is very small, about 0.0, .0 microfarad, and it's used to transfer high frequency of data signal. So this is high frequency, right? PCI Express 16 of data signal transfer. All right, so I'm just gonna head over to the RAM section now, and uh, this is the block diagram that I've just explained. All right, and this is the block diagram of this board, which is the Intel Series 7 PC, which matches the Intel Series 3rd and 2nd generation CPU, which is the Sandy Bridge, which is the 2nd gen, and Ivy Bridge, which is the 3rd generation. I'm going to go over to the RAM, which is the LEDR3. So my class is uh, going to the rest of the class. This is a demo video. I won't go into every single detail, but I'll give you a vast amount of information so I can tease your brain so you can join my class. All right, so this is DDR3 and Sodium 1 and DDR3 Sodium 2, which is two RAM slots. All right, so I'm going to go over to the page 12. I know this page is not correct, so let me just browse through this page manually because most times the schematic pages doesn't match the pages that is given to you on the block diagram. All right, so here it is and I was um, doing some typing before all right so this is JDM1A we have JDM1B we have two slots JDM2 and this is JDM2 which is divided into two parts so this is for the for one slot see all right JDM1A and JDM1B all right so they are divided and this is the second slot just JDM2A and we have JDM2B and that's another slot all right so this is the ram slot all right and the ram is divided into several sections right and there are normally three sections anybody can tell me what are the three sections that are found on the ram or in fact there are three buses that are found on each ram anybody can tell me what are the name of those three buses all right they are front we have the control address bus we have the control bus and last we have the data bus so these are the three buses that are found on most ram right so address bus control bus and data bus right so if you look at the ram slot here you can see we have different sections let me zoom in so we have like for example a we have b c k r a s s a 0 s a 1 o d t d m 4 d m 1 to d m 7 d q s all these right are different sections of the ram so I'm going to detail them and I'm going to uh, explain each, right? And uh, I'm going to show you, right? And how to use these. Uh, in, uh, when you're troubleshooting, for example, no display fault or the RAM doesn't pass or a RAM failure, how to, dis to <coughs> distinctively identify your problems without guessing and know what is the problem when it comes to RAM, right? 
So this part where we say a, we are from a0, we are from a0 to a15, and this is a total of 16 lines, and this is our address bus, right? It starts with a. So as you can see, this is an address bus. As you can see, the orientation of the arrow here, this is a one-way communication, right? Look at the arrow, very important. This is a one-way communication, and this is our address bus, right? And um, let me get it smaller. This is our address bus, right? And it's a one-way communication. Right, so the address bus is a one-way communication and this information is passed from the CPU. Right, this is coming from our CPU and this is a one-way communication. Please bear that in mind and this is coming from page 8 which is MA which is address. Right, and this is coming from the CPU. Right, this is normally used to access information of different peripherals such as peripheral mapping and so forth. Each device must pass through the address bus into the RAM so that the CPU can address it. Right, and this is normally done through an interrupt signal right each device carries an interrupt signal which is passed inside of the ram and then it is sent to the cpu for addressing right so this is why it's called the address bus in order for to access in the peripherals and access information of the ram in order for communication so the cpu can access next uh so this is a total of 16 lines and it's a one-way communication the next we have here which is this section from here right from b a zero all the way down right right all this information here is our oops i forgot the on the odt all the way down to the odt here right this is the control bus right this is your control bus right so as you can see the control bus has has some sections here some pins here we have ba0 ba1 ba2 right we have uh s0 s1 ck i also have a handle a, a handle here that i have typed right as you can see i have here the date the data we have control right data bus control bus right and this section which is a, a part of the control bus and the address bus as i said before is all of this section here all right so the control bus has a ddr2 and ddr3 we have cke we have chip select and we have odt these are the three main key signals that you have to focus on when troubleshooting especially no display or when the ram is not reading or the ram is not passed right so the clock enable which is cke which stands for clock enable which is one per dim right so cke which is here we have CKE0, CKE1. This is one group. So this is classified as one group. Right? One group. Right? This is one group of clock enabled. So this signal is sent from the memory controller when the RAM is red. Once the RAM is red, then the CKE will be at a rising edge. This is about 0.7 volts. Right? You should check here after the RAM pass. You can check the multimeter. Right? On oscilloscope, you get a rising edge like this. Once we get that, that means the RAM has successfully passed. Right, you should check here 0 0.74s. When this CKE0 is released, then it will the RAM will get clock. Right? The RAM will get its clock. So without the RAM, this signal won't come. If you remove the RAM, this signal won't come. You have to check this signal with the RAM in. Right? After you get the SM bus clock and data that is passed. Once it's the PCH reach the RAM, right? Because how it works is that. When the CPU gets the reset signal, it will go through the DMI bus, right? To tell the PCH to pass, to search for the BIOS. Once the BIOS is passed, well the aim, the main aim of the RAM is to store the BIOS in RAM. So once the BIOS is passed, sorry, once sorry, once the CPU gets the reset signal, it will go through the DMI bus to addressing. This is known as addressing. And this is now going to tell the PCH to search for the BIOS. So the PCH will go through the SPI bus, through the EC, and then the EC will go through the SPI bus. Once the BIOS is read, it will return back that instruction the same way, or it has gotten it, or it has got it, and then it has, then it will send it back to the CPU, 
right after the cpu gets that information it will now initialize the pch right the pch will initialize and then through the sm bus now through an sm bus the pc is pch will go and read the ram clock and data right on the ram there is some there's a there's a dedicated ram chip on the ram and that is where the pch will read that information about the ram the metadata information about the ram such as the frequency the manufacturer the size of the ram and so forth all that information is going to pass through this sm bus clock and data on the ram all right so this is the con this is all this is done through the control bus and that is done through pin 200 and pin 202 sda right so that is done through that scl and sda so pin 200 and pin 202 right this signal is passed double land though this is an error this is not supposed to be land right clock and data oh it is shared this is correct so it is shared through an sm bus so this is shared a shared sm bus on this architecture most times it is pulled up by 3.3 volts through a mosfet or a resistor which is connected to the 3 volt run supply so if there's no 3.3 volts here you should check here if there's no 3.3 volts here then the ram can't read it won't be able to read you get no display right so you need to check here for 3.3 volts then with the oscilloscope you check for sm bus lock and data all right so this is the control bus and we also have v which is write enable we have ras and cas right we have so S0 and S1 which is MA chip select as you can see and we have chip select which is a pair right which is a pair which is two but it is one group of chip select and that is to read the chip the, the, the pin the chip there's a chip select pin on the RAM right and that is used to read that RAM information all right and then now we have uh, the chip select we have the clocks which is going to be sent to the see these are all one-way communication don't get don't get confused now this is a one-way communication and this is all sent from the cpu so the cpu has a memory controller inside of it remember we said that remember some parts of the north bridge from the older boards is inside of the cpu and the other portions is inside of the pch so this is known as the mch which is mch which stands for memory controller hub right so the other uh, older architecture where you have gmch which stands for graphics memory controller hub because it has the video controller and the memory controller but for this one it has a mch which stands for memory controller hub so all this information is passed from the cpu instead of the mch to send to in order to communicate with the ram control bus so CKE0 which is clock enable a pair of clock so as you can see over here we have that information so for DDR2 it requires three pairs of clock per dim and DDR3 requires two pairs of clock right per dim so as you can see we have for DDR3 this is class is for DDR3 right see we have two pairs of clocks so here it is this is one pair CKE0 positive and negative CKE1 positive and negative so this is combined to two groups of clocks or two pairs of clocks right two groups of clock that is sent right to the RAM so you, in normal operation you can check here you will get a waveform right of clock and this is roughly over 100 megahertz so if you have a proper oscilloscope that can read up to 100 megahertz then you can check here right if you're going to use a multimeter normally you'll get roughly about 0 0.6 volts here if you're going to use a multimeter right and that indicates that the clock is working right so you should measure here with your meter you get 0 0.6 volts right if it's oscilloscope you'll get a waveform and this is over roughly a, some depending it can go over to 100 but your oscilloscope once within the bandwidth range it can re um, grab this waveform we also have a row address RAS which is column CAS sorry we have column address strobe and we have row address strobe because the, the way how the data is written they have row and column right so each data needs access in bits of bits of bits of pieces in order to access the data right and that is how it works so it's row address strobe right here it is we have RAS which is row address select we have CAS which is column address select or you can call it true alright so it is this is the um, the definition of the abbreviation 
we have MA which is the address bus right here it is so all this MA which is used for addressing see MA right MA MA all these are addressing so this is the A which is address bus right MA which stands for right memory access right memory access bus right we have uh, BS which is a uh, bank select we have row address strobe we have column address strobe and WE which is the write enable because remember that the CPU can receive and it can send data so when the CPU receives data it is known as read right right reading so it is reading right and when it is sending it is writing right so it can read and it can write to the RAM right so this is why it's called a dynamic right right so the RAM is dynamic access right random access memory so it can write and it can read right so this is how it works so that is why the write enable so the write enable signal is a very important and crucial signal right when the each time we have a pull down action on the oscilloscope the, the ram is right the cpu is writing to the ram right that's why it's called write enable and it has a hash where it is active when low right row address stroke these are all pull down actions so it is active low so this is, you can check here on these uh, on your oscilloscope and you can see the waveform and that you can know that your RAM is perfectly working because if the RAM is not installed then this signal won't be active right it will be just be a voltage right you won't get any waveform right so this is a very important and crucial that is why I've, I've highlighted them in this section right so we have CKE right we have CS and we have ODT so ODT which is stands for on die termination it's one per dim right so as you can see we have ODT pin 116 and pin 120 this is about 0 0.7 volts you should measure here with your with your multimeter right on the oscilloscope you'll get a writing edge like this so if this this, this pair of ODT signal is not coming no display fault will come right then if the signal is not coming then you should check your CPU memory controller working conditions and we can go there and type in VDDQ let me type in VDDQ right so VDDQ which is a DDR3 1.5 rails you should check here if this voltage is not coming then the RAM won't pass you get no display this is 1.5 which is coming from a conversion circuit right also we have the reference right VREF if this voltage see CPU MCH remember I talk about the MCH which is the memory controller hub if this voltage is not if this reference voltage is not coming it is a 0 0.75 voltage is half of the, the main voltage which is the reference voltage right and this voltage is coming to the CPU for the VREF section so if this is okay and this is okay then the RAM will start to send in the CPU will now start to communicate with the RAM right through the control bus right if this is not okay and there's another signal which is the DRAM power good D-R-A-M-P-W-R-G-D right D-R-A-M D RAM power okay. See this this signal. If this signal is not coming, definitely no display. So D RAM power would must be here, right? As you can see, it's anded together through an AND gate. So EC power okay and D RAM power would in order to produce what the system or the system management D RAM power okay, which is pulled up by 1.5 volts. This is going to the CPU memory controller section. So let me copy this signal. Right, so if you are not getting any of these communication lines on the RAM slot, then you should go to here and check if this signal is coming. See, power management, SMD RAM power, okay. If this 1.5 volt is not coming, then there is no, there will be no deep reset, no reset for the RAM. Most times, D RAM reset won't be active. All right. So that is um, the control bus. So on die termination should be high. This is a ODT on die termination. It should be high. Right, I'm gonna to get to that shortly. We also have here another DM0 to DM7. This is the data mask, right? This is not used, it's all connected to ground. This is used for impedance matching, right? And you can see this is another two-way communication. Look at the arrow, right? This arrow, all these arrows are one-way communication. This is a one-way communication. This is a two-way communication. And this is due to offset the compensation. This is for compensation, right? This is not data. That D normal stands for data. This is the data line from DQ0, 
from DQ0 to DQ63. This is the data line. As you can see, it's a two-way communication. And this is the data bus, right? See? DQ0 to DQ63. That's a total of 64 wires. which is connected to the RAM. Any fault? Any one of these lines are broken. Anyone? Anyone is broken. If he's even one, then you'll get no display. If any one of these lines is broken. If it's even one single one. All right? So that is the address bus. So here is for data. Let me go over to the notes. So DM, which is data mass, which is output only. DM, as you can see on this board, it's grounded. On other boards, it may be there, all right? Or maybe not, depending on the architecture. As you can see, it is grounded. These are for data mass, and it's normally used for impedance, right? A part of the impedance, data mass. We also have DQS, which is data strobe, and we have DQS, this is supposed to be a hash, all right? DQS, see, we have positive and negative, right? So we have a total of <coughs> eight wires here, right? From zero to seven, right? And this is positive, and we have here to here, zero to seven again, another eight, which is negative. So it's a positive and negative pair, and as you can see, it is used for data compensation. Very important. A lack of this, any fault on this one will cause no display because of the high speed transfer of frequency of data these resistance must be intact right so if there's any fault then remember this each time the data is accessed to the ram right it has to be the ram must be intact at all times so that data cannot be lost and it's also used to um prevent signal reflection also with the undie termination so this is connected to this part also the undie termination is used to prevent signal reflection right so uh this part of the RAM, as you can see here, which is very important, and you should measure the resistance here, right? You can use also use a dummy RAM slot connector and plug it inside of the RAM, and you can measure each values here, or you can use the LED lit one, and you can use to measure the the, the communication and the bus line if there is any short or any broken uh, open circuit between the RAM and the CPU, right? So this is the data data this is a data bus but it's not the data bus which is from here s data strobe right and this is the data bus so this is data mass data strobe ds all right see data strobe complements and we have ds which is data strobe or dq this is a data bus dqs zero to seven data strobe and we have dqs this should be negative which is the data strobe complements are for it's used for as i said for compensation all right um so so as you can see here we have um data bus so this is a 64 64 lines right as you can see 64 so let me get the diagram designer here all right let me just so for the data bus right so how the how the access how, how i'm going to show you now how the, the, the cpu knows how to know the access to know to transfer how many bits of data so dq which is the data bus from here from dq0 to dq63 this is the data bus right this is not the data bus these are just for compensation and impedance right this is the main data bus all the information for the ram is going to be written here and send it to and from as you can see it's a two-way communication so each time the write enable signal is pull low the ram is accessing and writing data and the data is also sent to the cpu so the cpu as i said can read and it can write so this x section here can read and can write so this is a very important part as i said before any one of these lines are broken you get no display right they are all connected in parallel so please keep that in mind all right so let me go back to the diagram designer here so the diagram designer as you can see here for example let's say for example we have the cpu here and then this section here we have the ram right so remember by default this is a it is normally accessing two states high and low right high and low the data is normally passed in high and low see high and low high and low see we have on we have zero one and zero right high and low high and low all the data is passed see zero 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 high 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 which is this is for high positive right this is on so this is categorized as on and this is categorized as zero and this normally does this in a uh, four times a four bit communication and it is normally two states so it is either 
zero or one all right so let's go over to the diagram designer so this is the cpu all right and this is the ram all right so and this is the ram okay so hop, so remember the address bus is normally a a one-way communication from the cpu to the ram right and then we also have um another communication which is for the data and this is normally done in a two bit in a four uh communicate a four time communication and it is two states high or low right so as you can see we have a two-way communication this is the data bus and this is high uh this is the address bus and this is the data bus so normally we have a let's say a, a one this is one way and this is two lines two right two lines communication here all right two, two now how this works how the cpu communicates with the ram and the cpu is that it is done through so let's say let me get my point to fix all right so this is the point of it so let's say so each 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 as i said before is a zero and a one so let's say each state we have two zero remember this is done four times to a four bit right so zero zero we have all right one and zero we have this is off and this is on and we have two ons right so this is equal to a four bit so it's two so it's either off or on so this is normally done four times so this is known as two to the second power right so this is how it's done two to the second power so because there's two lines let's say this is three lines here this is a three jump three line communication so it to be two to the third power right and if it's four you get what i'm saying right so this is the communication how it is done mathematically and the, the cpu can communicate through the address bus this is for the address bus you know remember dq0 to dq63 this line right this line all of this section here right all of this section here from dq0 to dq63 right all of this section all right oops all right so for all the models for all the boards previous boards in ddr uh ddr first gen right this is normally done to a 32 bit so it's 32 lines you know most times so it's a 32 line so this is normally equal to uh, 2 to the 32 power or to the 30 seconds power right so this is done how this is calculated right so it's right uh, 2 to the 10 right multiply by 2 to the 10 right multiply by 2 to the 10th power again right so that's 3 tenths you get what I'm, you get the idea right and then lastly multiply by 2 by 2 which is 2 which is normally as I said before which is the 4 bit right transfer rate in the two states so it's two states right so how do we calculate this now all right so let me just rephrase it again it's smaller all right so it's 2 to the 30 second power right so that's equal to by right, 2 to the 10 right multiply by 2 to the 10 again per power multiply by 2 to the 10 right right Multi multiply by 2 to the second power right so so we are say 10 times 10 that's normally 100 right so that's equal to 1k right 1k right multiply by another 2 to the 10 which is equal to 1m which is 1 megabyte right right <coughs> so 1 times 1 which is equal to 1k multiply by 1 megabyte which is equal to 1 gigabyte 1 gb right so this is the 1 gb right when you calculate all of that information all of these you get total of 1 meg and then the last one which is 2 to the 4 which is 2 Right, which is equal to four. Right, two two is four. So one times four. Normal. This is a four gigabyte data transfer on the older machine. So each RAM bank is thirty two, which are thirty two. So the DQ zero to DQ sixty three would be thirty two. So it is thirty two 
right, 32 DQ0, which is a total of 32 lines. So that indicates that it can transfer up to 4 gigabytes of data on each bank. So 4 for this bank and the other bank, which is the other DIM, which is on our 4, is a total of 8. Right, 8 GB of data can be transferred on both RAM slots at the same time. Right, so this is how the address bus and control bus is communicating. Right, so that's how it works. Alright, so the on die termination, as I said before, all these are, are on the control bus. This is the data bus, right, address bus, and control bus and the data mask. Now, let's go over to the, uh, the notes. And uh, sorry, let me just clear all this. All right, so so for the working conditions, so the memory of several important signal action sequences are basically as follows. So first, we check the power supply, which is the main power supply for the memory. This is our DDR3, so we have 1.5 volts. Then you will check the VTT power supply. Let me see only another part there. The VTT power supply. Then we have the 0 0.75 volt for the reference power supply. Alright, so this pin here, these are all the pins over here. Alright, let me zoom out a bit here. So first we check the power supply, which is the main 1.5 volts. Right, then we check the next supply, which is the other one, which is uh, VTT, which is the voltage termination supply, 0 0.75 volts. Alright. Alright, so that is the termination VTT and it is half of the voltage. So let's find it. See, pin 203, pin 204 should check here 0 0.75 volts. Right, this voltage is abnormal. You'll get blue screen, right? Uh, most times freezing and so forth if this voltage is abnormal. Most times you'll get a blue screen, right? And this is the ground pins, right? Let's go over back to the timing. So we have 0 0.7 SPD chip power supply. 3.3 volts so this is VDD SPD which is the BIOS chip this is the BIOS chip on the RAM there is a small BIOS chip on the RAM this pin if this pin is not supplying that chip then the CPU won't get to read the RAM information right that is stored all that information about the RAM speed the manufacturer the size and so forth so this is the main VDD SPD right serial presence detection and this 3.3 volt run is coming here if this voltage is abnormal if this capacitor is abnormal or it's leaking then it can cause no display this single capacitor, single as speed. Very important to check pin 199, right? Also, all right, so we have SM bus pull up voltage, which is 3.3 volts, which is the memory controller, 1.5 volt power supply, right? And this SM bus pull up 3.3 volt is connected to pin 202 and pin 200 and to pin 200, sorry. See, pin 200 and pin 202, right? And you should check uh, pin 200 and pin 202 pin 200 and pin 202 and this is normally connected to a 3.3 volt pull up so let's go back to the skin let's see where it goes all right there not there not there ah uh, here it is so here is the resistor all right it's a 2.2k resistor and it's connected to 3 volt run here it is all right 3.3 volt run so this signal is due to a communication so each time when the pch is reading the ram right it is communicating through these resistors and it gives a high and high low jump pulse and then it is communicating if this mosfet is not switching that info that this is an internal mosfet so this three volt pull up is switching over to the, 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 the smb data and clock to the ram this is coming from the cpu this is coming from the cpu from the pca sorry and this is going to the ram slot right right this is coming from the pch and this is going to the ram slot right, please bear that in mind So that is SM bus clock and data. And uh, we have here uh, the memory controller 1.5 volt, as I said before. I uh, will explain this, and it's a VDDQ. So VDDQ, right, 1.5 volt memory controller supply. See DDR3 1.5 volt rail, right? For, for the CPU, a lock of this voltage will cause no display, and also this reference also will cause no display. So those are the ref, VREF power supply. 0.75 and the memory controller 1.5 volt power supply ODT this is the on die termination and I will explain so the termination resistor inside the memory controller is used for impedance matching right of the memory data bus to reduce signal reflection right because of the high frequency of transfer speed right there's a inside inside of the CPU there is a termination resistor right there's a termination resistor that is inside of the CPU connected to ground right and it is connected inside of the CPU so each time the CPU sends data right each time it sends data it's writing 
and when the CPU returns that information, it's reading. So if this is why there are compen these are why there are termination resistors. There are some small resistors on the RAM, right? These are used for offsetting the frequency, right? And it is used for impedance matching. On older boards, they will put these resistors on the board, but they are not on the board anymore. So they put them on the so they are inter termination capacitors and resistors. Sorry, and they are normally found on the board, but now they are found on the RAM. You will see some small resistors that are used for impedance matching right because of the high transfer rate of, of, of uh, uh, the speed of the data that is sent to and from the ram the cpu this is used to keep that information so that it's not lost because when the cpu is sending that information the ram needs to return that and it needs to keep the data intact through these termination resistor right because it's basically the reactance of uh, an impedance is basically the reactance of a particular circuit when current is applied to it through it so this is why it needs to uh, to get the data intact to when it is retrieving that data back so if this any fault that is found on this termination resistor then the data will be lost right it doesn't know how to send and receive the data all the data will be disappeared and it cause that can cause hanging no display and so forth so please bear that in mind so that is why the on die termination which is 0 0.7 volts when the signal is low the memory controller cannot drive the signal and the and the file will appear meaning that it will report an error you will get freezing then it will uh, cause no display so this voltage should be the first signal that you should check right after checking the power supply you should check here 0 0.7 volts on pin 116 and pin 120 a lack of this voltage will cause no display all right and you should if this voltage is not coming then you should check your working conditions right here right then you should check SM bus clock and data when the computer runs normally when the CPU gets its reset signal and so forth then it will the system will read the memory capacity manufacturer information the frequency and information such as the bit bit the parity checks and different codes so the parity check is like a handshaking signal so the handshaking signal is a parity check of, of, of bits of one and zero and all that information is passed through the SM bus right there's a small bias strip on the RAM this is a demo class I won't go deep I won't go in depth so I'll just uh, be brief we have CKE here which is clock on or clock enable so right this is the next signal I'm giving them in the order you know you should check them when the system reads the memory normally through the SM bus then it will immediately send the clock enable and then the clock will be generated to the RAM right remember I tell you about the clock all right this is the clock see that all right it is two groups of clocks all right so that's one and two ck0 ck1 so and these are two groups of clock that is sent to the ram all right so that is ck0 and ck1 then we have dram reset which is after the above conditions are met the memory controller starts to drive dram reset to initialize the action and this is normally a pull down action on the oscilloscope all right let me see if i can find a waveform here uh, oscilloscope all right oscilloscope waveforms all right and uh dram reset let me see if i can find a dram reset mm -hmm. okay i think i have a single one here let me see if i can find it a dram reset DRAM reset. Okay, here it is inter series. Oh, that's not it. Sorry. This is the DRAM reset. Alright, so DRAM reset, which is a, a pull on action. You should grab the first one. Normally, it's in different pull because the RAM itself has different the SD RAM, the banks. And uh, let me see what's so stopping this from open oh here it is all right so this is the dram reset a single pull on action here as you can see right so the voltage is one volts per division so this is one 1.5 volts it's in the center and this pull on action increase indicates that this is a valid reset signal active low as you can see dram reset as a hash sign right and this is the uh DRAM reset pin, right? DRAM reset hash, as you can see on the image. I'll open too much. 
all right so this is the pull on action so this basically resets each individual banks that are found on the ram right so each ram has an individual uh if you notice on some most rams let me see if i can get the camera here all right so as you can see here are the different memory banks right so these individual banks need to be reset right so each of them needs a reset signal so depending on how many you get each reset signal for each right and this is the BIOS chip, this is the smart EEPROM chip that is on the RAM, this information is the small BIOS chip that is on the RAM and each time, so this is the chip select and the, the SM bus is going to be connected to the to the pins here, right, so pin number 1, so pin number 1 to 3 is grounded, pin number 5 and 6 clock on data, right, and pin number 8 which is the supply, here is the capacitor which is the main supply for it, right, and these are the termination resistors, right, so these are the termination resistors and capacitor, see, a set of res termination resistor, you have a capacitor here a resistor capacitor resistor capacitor capacitor resistor so these are the termination capacitors which is connected in order to offset the for sorry impedance matching right so that the data is not lost before on all the boards these resistors are placed on the board right and no on not in these no motherboards they are placed now on the ram on both sides as you can see right termination resistors and capacitors and this is where the on die termination is used to test that integrity of the on die so basically that what it does the impedance on die termination pin 116 and pin 120 tests the integrity of these resistances if any of these resistances are failing then no display fault will come the ram is bad or you can just replace the faulty cap resistor and the ram is repaired okay all right so that's the uh the RAM reset so I have another way from here to show you each reset signal for the RAM right remember it's a pull on action each time let me see if I can find a waveform that waveform okay here it is right so each time so we have the RAM is red right this is the RAM reset it passes the RAM right so this is two channel so after this is each grid here is five milliseconds so 5 milliseconds so that's 5 10 right after 12 milliseconds the ram is reset so it must pass the ram first right ram is passed first if ram is not passed then you won't get a reset signal so without ram this signal the ram reset won't come so ram must be installed when the ram is passed then after 12 milliseconds then it will start reset each bank see 1 2 3 4 right so it's 4 that's one two three four reset so each of these need reset because it need to test if these are okay if any one of these are okay then the ram cannot write the cpu cannot write information to the ram right because the cpu needs to check if the ram is perfectly intact first before it can send the data information to pass the read and write to the ram right so one two three four must be reset so 1.5 volts go to them right and the reset signal and then the data can pass through because these are actual chips they need resets okay so that is all each of these are the reset for each of the banks each of the sd rams all right then we have uh the write enable so after the dram reset is passed then the cpu will start to write the memory right after the memory set is the memory controller drive dq which is the data strobe so each time there's a write enable address line and the other signal actions and are turned on data transmit on the dq uh I just said sorry I just line selection and other sig signal actions and turns on data is transmitted on the DQ data bus all right so this is the DQ this is the right enable all right so on that termination is high before SM bus action when reset is pull up the on that termination of DDR3 and the SDRAM keeps a high impedance in addition all right ODT also maintains a high impedance state from reset high to up to the clock enable high prior to CK enable the input signal of on die terminal should be active after the ck is pulled high the input of the odt will not change and it is always in the low state or high state so this is a very important and crucial signal odt right below are some comparisons that i've developed uh, i've screenshotted with other ram signals so as you can see odt is first and then after we have sm bus clock so the on die termination is out first and then after this is 50 milliseconds of so one two so this is 100 200 300 after 390 right so this is the ram clock 
uh, SM bus clocks. So after 300 and and 70 milliseconds then the RAM will read so on that termination must be present first then after the RAM will be read if this voltage is not coming see it's it's uh, 500 millivolts so channel 1 this is channel 1 and that's 500 millivolts so that's 0 0.7 volts right ODT with SM bus clock right see ODT is out first and then we have DRAM reset right so ODT must be present first right then we have ODT with clock enable. You see, these are rising edge. So ODT is out first, and then after this is uh, 50 milliseconds. That's one, two, three. After 350 milliseconds, then the clock will be enabled. Right? We have DRAM reset. We compared with SM bus. So the SM bus first, and then after two, so that's two milliseconds. Uh, about three milliseconds. Then the RAM will reset. All right, so SM bus. Then after the pull on action, the RAM is reset. All right, and then we have write enable. So each time, so right after the RAM reset, then we have the write enable. So each time you have a pull on action, that indicates that the CPU is writing data. Everything is passed. Display should be there, right? Everything, the thing is okay. If there's no display, then there's a fault with the graphic card only, right? So when this signal is okay, this is the last signal you should check. Then everything is okay. Then you can check, you know right right enable with sm bus clock and then lastly data read which is the right enable with data read so each time the data is written as you can see there is right enable there is data writing on the line all right so double e after the complete initialization the dq bus has normally read and the waveform action of ram action is complete initialization is complete right and then you should get display so this is the formula and this is the technique and uh, there's a lot more techniques that I can use, but this is a demo video and this is a theoretical part of the thing, right? And uh, when you join my class, I'll show you practically live demonstration how to check the RAM signal, right? And uh, how to check no display fault when it comes to RAM, especially for the Dell's four beeps, right? Or when the RAM is not passed and you're not getting the right code and LPC bus is not in action, then I can show you how to confirm that no display fault, right? Which is most of the fear for most uh, repair technicians out there for the no displays. Anyway, uh, that concludes the video, so um, thanks for watching and I hope you learn something, okay, bye. Alright, so this is our Asus motherboard I have here and uh, it's an no display fault. And as you can see, we have a code reading of 6.9. Right, so if I remove the charger and uh, plug in the adapter, right, you can see that uh, the CPU running code, if you get 0.0, zero that means the CPU is not running code. So the CPU gets the reset signal initializing the chipset and the RAM is initialized and it's uh, giving me a code of 6.9.